Hi everyone, and welcome back to Reading for Fluency. Today we are going to start part two. Yeah, I'm excited. We are going to do chapter 29. Are you ready? I am, so let's find out what happens to Stanley. There was a change in the weather for the worse. The air became unbearably, unbearably humid. Stanley was drenched, drenched in sweat. Beads of moisture ran down the handle of his shovel. It was almost as if the temperature had gotten so hot that the air itself was sweating. Ugh. A loud boom of thunder echoed across the empty lake. A storm was way off to the west, beyond the mountains. Hmm. Stanley could count more than 30 seconds between the flash of lightning and the clap of thunder. That was how far away the storm was. Cool, right? Sound travels a great distance across the barren wasteland. Usually, Stanley couldn't see the mountains at this time of day. The only time they were visible, v -v -v visible was just at sunup before the air became hazy. This is super hot. Now, however, the sky was very dark off to the west, and every time the lightning flashed, the dark shape of the mountains would appear briefly. Briefly appear, briefly appear. I do that all the time. I reverse those things. Everybody does that. Don't worry. Let's read it back for fluency and include our tones and our excitement and our emotions and all of that stuff. The good stuff. The good stuff. <laughs> there was a change in the weather, for the worse. The air became unbearably humid. Stanley was drenched in sweat. Beads of moisture ran down the handle of his shovel. It was almost as if the temperature had gotten so hot that the air itself was sweating. A loud boom of thunder echoed across the empty lake. A storm was way off to the west, beyond the mountains. Stanley could count more than 30 seconds between the flash of lightning and the clap of thunder. That was how far away the storm was. Sound travels a great distance across the barren wasteland. Usually Stanley couldn't see the mountains at this time of the day. The only time they were visible was just at sunup, before the air became hazy. Now, however, the sky was very dark off to the west, and every time the lightning flashed, the dark shape of the mountains would briefly appear. <sighs> Sounds dark and dangerous. Something bad's gonna happen, I think. Come on, rain, shouted Armpit. Blow this way. Maybe it'll rain so hard it will fill up the whole lake, said Squid. We can go swimming. <laughs> yeah. Forty days and forty nights, said X-Ray. Guess we better start building us an ark. Get two of each animal, right? Right, said Zigzag. Two rattlesnakes, two scorpions, two yellow spotted lizards. The humidity, or maybe the electricity, electricity in the air, had made Zigzag's head even more wild looking. His frizzy blonde hair was stuck almost straight out. The horizon lit up with a huge web of lightning. In that split second, Stanley thought he saw an unusual rock formation on top of one of the mountain peaks. The peak looked to him exactly like a giant fist with a thumb sticking straight up. Mm. Then it was gone, and Stanley wasn't sure whether he'd seen it or not. I found refuge, refuge, refuge on God's thumb, th -th thumb. That was what his great grandfather had supposedly said after Kate Barlow had robbed him and left him stranded in the desert. No one ever knew what he meant by that. He was delirious, delirious when he said it. Now, not now, no one, <laughs> wait, eh, move down a little further. 
But how could he live for three weeks without food or water? Stanley asked his father. I don't know. I wasn't there, replied his father. I wasn't born yet. My father wasn't born yet. My grandmother, your great great grandmother, great grandmother, was a nurse in the hospital where they treated him. He always talked about how she'd dab his forehead with a cool, wet cloth. He said that's why he fell in love with her. Aw, he thought she was an angel. A real angel? His father didn't know. What about after he got better? Did he ever say what he meant by God's thumb or how he survived? Survived? No, he just blamed his no good pig stealing father. Hmm. The storm moved off farther west along with any hope of rain, but the image of the fist and thumb remained in Stanley's head. Although instead of lightning flashing behind the thumb, in Stanley's mind, the lightning was coming out of the thumb, as if it were the thumb of God. <laughs> Let's read it back, okay? Now remember, emotion here. We have people talking. Come on, rain, shouted Armpit. Blow this way. Maybe it'll rain so hard it'll fill up the lake, said Squid. We can go swimming. Forty days and forty nights, said X-Ray. Guess we better start building us an ark. Get two of each animal, right? Right, said Zigzag. Two rattlesnakes, two scorpions, two spotted lizards. The humidity, or maybe the electricity in the air, had made Zigzag's head a little bit better. <laughs> Every time. The humidity, or maybe the electricity in the air, had made Zigzag's head even more wild looking. His frizzy blonde hair stuck almost straight out. The horizon lit up with a huge web of lightning. In that split second, Stanley thought he saw an unusual rock formation on top of one of the mountain peaks. The peak looked to him exactly like a giant fish. <laughs> We're struggling today. The peak looked to him exactly like a giant fist with a thumb sticking straight up. Then it was gone, and Stanley wasn't sure whether he'd seen it or not. I found refuge on God's thumb. That was what his great-grandfather had supposedly said after Kate Barlow had robbed him and left him stranded in the desert. No one ever knew what he meant by that. He was delirious when he said it. But how could he live for three weeks without food or water? Stanley had asked his father. I don't know. I wasn't there, replied his father. I wasn't born yet. My father wasn't born yet. My grandmother, your great-grandmother was a nurse at the hospital where they treated him. He'd always talk about how she'd dab his forehead with a cool, wet cloth. He said that's why he fell in love with her. He thought she was an angel. A real angel? His father didn't know. What about after he got better? Did he ever say what he meant by God's thumb or how he survived? No, he just blamed his no-good pig-stealing father. The storm moved off farther west along with any hope of rain. But the image of the fist and thumb remained in Stanley's head. Although instead of lightning flashing behind the thumb, in Stanley's mind, the lightning was coming out of the thumb as if it were God's thumb. I think that's ominous, right? I wonder what is going to happen. How will they find out what that God's thumb thing is? Was it really there? Or was it just because he was imagining it? Who knows? What do you think? Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. And I'll see you for the next chapter because I want to find out what happens. Bye.